In Italy, criminal mastermind Cyrus is arriving at a prestigious auction house with a plan in mind. Inside he walks by disguise master Denton and hacker me soon but he pretends he doesn't know them, when in fact they're part of his team. Nearby, an Interpol team led by Abby is keeping an eye on the event in case Cyrus tries something. Abby is furious because she dated Cyrus for a week without knowing he was a wanted criminal. This auction is happening at the same time in London where team members Magnus the Safecracker and Luke the Engineer are getting in position. Back in Venice, the first piece of art is bought by Malzen for 11 million, and then the host introduces the artist N8, whose NFT is being auctioned next. It's a mask made of 482 cameras, which will create an NFT based on Van Gigg style and a live 30-second feed of the moment of the sale. Cyrus immediately makes a high offer and Abby guesses he knows her team is there. He and Denton try to outbid Malzen, and once the sale is done, Misun activates an alarm. Everyone starts leaving the auction house and Abby gets suspicious, so she sends her team in. In London, the alarm is also going off and Magnus messes with an electronic lock to sneak inside the storage, where he steals a very expensive painting. He puts it inside a tube and throws it into the water, where it's picked up by Luke. Back to Cyrus, he offers N8 to come to his yacht to finish the transaction. They leave through the back door where pilot Camilla is waiting for them on a boat. They're already gone by the time Abby arrives and she realizes that since an NFT can't be physically stolen, they've stolen the artist instead. She rushes outside to try to follow them on another boat, but Misun hacks into a bunch of boats to block her way. Abby refuses to give up and gets on a different boat, so Camilla starts driving at great speed and taking steep corners to slow her down. When they make it to the sea, Misun activates a barrier, allowing Camilla to drive through just in time but leaving Abby behind. When the team makes it to the yacht, they pay N8 the 20 million for the NFT and start to party. Afterward, Abby and her team look at the security montage and notice that Denton had been faking his limp, so she sends her men to look for him. The next morning, N8's kidnapping appears on the news. N8 freaks out when he realizes these guys are criminals, but Cyrus quickly explains what's going on. The Mona Lisa only became valuable after it was stolen, so they copied that idea. Magnus and Luke sold the painting for 20 million for Cyrus to buy the NFT from N8, and now that's disappeared, the NFT is worth 89 million. Cyrus will be sharing the money with N8, who happily plays along. Meanwhile Denton has been arrested by Interpol and Abby has a picture proving he knows Cyrus. While she tries to interrogate him, she receives a box sent by Cyrus with his paddle from the auction and pictures from the week they spent together. Frustrated, Abby decides to go to London and bring Denton. At the British headquarters, Abby meets with Huxley, who wants to offer Cyrus a deal. At first Abby refuses because she's been chasing Cyrus for a whole year, but Huxley has a mission that takes priority. Jorgensen is a very dangerous criminal who has killed hundreds of people for money, but they never got enough evidence to arrest him. Huxley has finally caught a mole and learned Jorgensen is teaming up with hacker group Leviathan to plan a strike on water, which will flood a city and kill millions. Leviathan wants their payment in gold and Jorgensen is going to move it from London to Zurich in 17 days. Since it's not illegal to move your own gold, Huxley wants Cyrus to steal it and prevent the transaction. Abby hates it yet has no choice but to agree. In the evening, Abby visits Cyrus, who refuses the job when he hears the name Jorgensen because of how dangerous he is. Abby points out that she is Denton and he'll die in jail unless Cyrus accepts the job, which will grant full immunity for the whole team, meaning they'll be able to see their families again. Cyrus only agrees if Abby works with them too. Meanwhile in Ireland, henchman Cormac has captured the mole and has been hurting him for a while. Once the guy has suffered enough, Cormac video calls Jorgensen so he can watch how a dog eats the traitor. The next day Abby releases Denton and meets with the team to share the intel she has. The gold bars will be packed in a crate, and on both airports it'll be surrounded by guards. After lots of thinking, Cyrus decides they should take the whole plane, meaning they should use a second aircraft to swap the radar signature. To do so they'll need a private jet, so they visit Malzen to borrow his. Malzen at first refuses but quickly becomes cooperative when Abby shows him his badge and points out he's been flying illegally. Then Malzen explains how everything in the jet is remote controlled and shows off some of its features, like a hidden pole and a screen underneath. Afterward Abby uses an Interpol hangar to hide the jet, which they're covering up to look like an old unsuspicious plane. Magnus works on modifying his vault breaking laser so it will work on a plane despite the turbulence, and Denton is already testing new wigs and beards. Camilla is having a bit of trouble with the simulation to practice moving the jet under the gold plane, but Cyrus has an idea. Luke will put all the cameras from the NFT on the jet so Camilla can have full visibility around the plane. Misun has a program to hack into the GPS transmissions to trick air traffic control, the issue is that doing both the jet and the plane at the exact same time when they're moving so fast is impossible. Someone at traffic control will notice two planes with the same signal, but luckily Abby knows someone. Sometime later, Abby and Cyrus meet with Harry, who works at air traffic control but is also an informant for Interpol. Abby can't convince him to help with the helping people argument, so Cyrus offers him a million dollars instead and Harry instantly agrees. Later the duo meets with Huxley, who tells them they found the mole dead and because of that, the bank will move the gold in 10 days instead of 17. 
Cyrus doesn't think there's enough time and wants out, triggering an argument with Huxley. Abby shuts them both up by reminding them this is about saving lives, so Cyrus agrees to stay for her. At the hangar, the team sees on the news that cyber terrorists have attacked Madrid's water grid and the city is now severely flooded. There are 13 dead people so far, but they expect the numbers to get worse soon. Cyrus thinks this has gotten too dangerous and tries to quit again, but the team refuses to give up now and they agree they must stop Jorgensen, although Luke sounds hesitant. In his mansion, Jorgensen thanks Leviathan for their little demonstration. After lots of work, Misun finishes the device that will hack the plane's GPS, but unfortunately it looks like a bomb. They have no choice but to choose a few of them to get on the plane with the pieces and reassemble the device aboard. For the next 10 days, the team works hard on finishing all the details, covering up the plane, practicing the assembly of the device, and getting all their chores done in perfect synchronization. When the day finally comes, Cyrus and Abby get on the plane pretending to be a couple in first class while the rest of the team is spread in different sections. Cormac and four other henchmen are also there to keep an eye on the gold. The team is wearing hidden communicators to stay in contact, and Cyrus realizes Luke isn't checking in. He calls him on the phone and learns that Luke got too scared of Jorgensen, so he decided to quit the mission. As the plane takes off, so does Camilla on the jet. On her laptop, Misun hacks into the plane's information and discovers Jorgensen's henchmen are aboard, so they'll have to move carefully. One by one, the team members enter the bathroom to hide the device pieces, then Abby goes in to put it together. She only has 10 minutes until Camilla reaches their location so she's got to be fast. Abby manages to put the device together quickly, but when she's about to hide it behind a light, it drops and comes apart. Soon Cyrus notices she's taking too long and enters the bathroom to help her. At that moment, henchman Donald gets suspicious and knocks on the door, so Abby starts making noises to make it look like they're doing the dirty to keep him away. Meanwhile Camilla's cameras are having trouble with the turbulence and the signal goes out. Another camera even breaks, but before time runs out, Camilla pulls a last minute move and pushes the jet right under the plane. Because the device isn't ready yet, the same signal appears twice on the computers of traffic control, so Harry has to distract a coworker by pretending to feel harassed by her. Thankfully right then Abby and Cyrus finish the assembly and the device hacks into the plane, making the second signal disappear. To celebrate, Cyrus kisses Abby after hiding the device. Afterward, Harry calls the plane pilots to tell them about a fake storm and asks them to change course, sending them to a private airfield in the Alps. The pilots believe it and start flying away while Camilla releases a drone that will keep the signal on the original course to trick the other traffic computers. The pilots also announce the change to the passengers, so the henchmen get ready to act. Meanwhile Denton is playing the part of a sick man and distracts the stewardess so that Magnus can take one of his oxygen tanks and sneak into the cargo area. Once Misun has cut down the Wi-Fi and hacked into the gold's lock, Magnus puts on an oxygen mask and opens the compartment with the gold, which hits him with the pressure variance and makes the plane shake a little. Accessing the gold with the laser is going to take a while, and the henchmen are getting in position. Donal uses his gun to kidnap a stewardess and tries to get her to open the cockpit, which is seen by Abby. At that moment the laser makes the plane shake again, and Cyrus uses the chance to tackle Donal, who responds by opening fire. Cyrus begins throwing bags at him as defense and jumps on him to disarm him while a second henchman arrives. This guy is jumped on by Abby, who starts beating him up at the same time Cyrus starts fighting Donal hand to hand. The more Magnus uses the laser, the more the plane shakes, and both fights start stumbling all over the place. Donal tries to choke Cyrus with a phone cable at the same time Abby pushes a cabinet, causing both henchmen to dodge out of the way and the cabinet falls downstairs with Cyrus and the stewardess. At that moment Magnus finally opens the safe and accesses the gold. Abby knocks down the other henchman while Donal retrieves his gun, but before he can shoot, Cyrus knocks him out by smashing him against some glass. Then Cyrus and Abby try to reach Magnus, only to find the way blocked by Cormac and his gun. Suddenly the plane lands on the new destination and since the ground is frozen, it starts sliding around, not stopping until it gets caught by the snow. Soon Camilla also lands with the jet and she has to make an extra effort to stop it from sliding right before it hits the plane. Cormac and his two men capture Abby, Cyrus, Magnus, and Camilla. After calling Jorgensen to confirm the gold is fine, Cormac promises to deliver it himself. Cyrus tries to make him use the train as originally planned, but Cormac chooses to take the jet instead, taking the team with him except for Magnus. Moments later, Camilla is piloting the jet under Cormac's orders, but she presses a button to send her teammates a signal. Abby and Cyrus put on their seat belts and Camilla starts piloting the jet like a maniac, making it shake while pretending it's the gold throwing them off balance. All the shaking is slowly removing the metal covers, which will help the jet be found again. Back in the Alps, Magnus hits his captor and steals the gun, only to put it down and try to escape. When the henchman grabs the weapon and tries to shoot, the gun backfires and hurts his hand just like Magnus modified it to do. At the train station, Huxley notices the gold isn't coming and his partner informs him the plan failed, now the gold is flying to Jorgensen's villa. Huxley decides to call the NATO and tells them about a terrorist threat that needs to be shot down, 
not caring if Abby dies in the process. As the military jets take off, Jorgensen meets with the Leviathan leaders and pretends the delay with the gold was his own plan to distract the authorities. Soon the team's plane is surrounded by the NATO jets, so Harry informs the authorities that there are civilians aboard. However Huxley lies and says it isn't true, ordering to shoot it down anyway. Desperate, Cyrus activates the pole to disarm the henchmen, then he and Abby start fighting them all over the place. In the struggle, Abby manages to grab the remote control and makes the word civilian hostages on board appear on the big screen under the jet. Then Camilla pulls a crazy move and turns the jet upside down to show the message to the soldiers, who immediately cancel the rockets. Once the other jets are gone, a henchman threatens Camilla into making things right. She puts the jet back in position before fighting the thug, who immediately pushes her back on her seat and breaks her wrist, reminding her to land. Camilla pretends to pilot only to suddenly pull a lever, causing the jet to start falling at great speed. While Cyrus keeps Cormac away, Abby reaches the control again and opens the door, which sends Cormac flying out of the plane before she closes it again. Afterward the duo rushes to the cockpit and takes over the controls because Camilla can't pilot with a broken wrist. They manage to make the plane stop falling, however another metal piece goes loose and damages the hydraulic pump. While still in pain, Camilla does her best to steer the plane using the engines and the jet lands on Jorgensen's garden, but it slides down the road for a few minutes and keeps getting destroyed until it turns on its side. The gold immediately falls off the plane and Cyrus, Camilla, and Abby are surrounded by Jorgensen's guards. Cyrus notices there's a camera still working and mentions the NTF they saw during the auction, which is a sign for me soon to start hacking. Jorgensen comes to interrogate them with a gun, but at that moment, the Leviathan leader gets a message telling her about Interpol and cancels the deal. Furious, Jorgensen shoots her leg and demands her to restore the deal, but since she turns him down, he shoots again to kill her. Then Jorgensen asks who the Interpol agent is, so Cyrus pretends it's him. Before Jorgensen can shoot him, the Italian police arrive and surround them. Jorgensen pretends he just took out his gun in self-defense because some crazy guys landed in his garden, so Cyrus gives me soon the signal and now the video of Jorgensen killing the woman appears on the screen of the plane. While Jorgensen is arrested, Huxley and another agent arrive by chopper. Abby learns from the agent that Huxley almost got them shot, so she punches him and announces she is quitting. Cyrus and Camilla are leaving on a boat, and Abby soon joins them. A few weeks later, Cyrus surprises Abby by buying back her childhood home. He also makes a big reveal, Luke never quit, he was on a side mission to steal the gold. Magnus had made a bunch of fake gold bars and shipped them on the same plane, so during the fight, he exchanged the gold for the fake cargo and threw the real bars out of the plane. Luke was in the Alps using a remote control to make the gold land safely, and Huxley was furious that he was stuck with useless metal. Now Cyrus and Abby reunite with the team next to a lake and using the remote control, they take gold out of the water. Abby agrees to join the team and Cyrus kisses her to welcome her.